Hello and welcome back to MLB The Show 19 and the Salamon Barrios Road to the Show. I'm Tyron Saber. I missed l the last upload for this week, uh, the week of February, uh, the day of February the 26th. I was sick. I apologize. I'm better now and I'm going to try to get back on the swing of things. But uh, to make up for Wednesday's missing episode, we're going to try to do a double header today. So let's get on it. Going out here to face off shortly against the Seattle Mariners, but first we get a practice day. What do we want? Arm accuracy would seem to be a wise choice, arm with, along with arm strength, perhaps. Uh, and really, I don't see anything else that's compelling to me, so yeah, let's go ahead and work on arm accuracy and strength for Salamone. Because as long as he's on the Angels, he seems inevitable to play, uh, play the outfield but that is going to put us out here against the Seattle Mariners in T-Mobile Park so let's get out here and get it coming to you from Seattle tonight where the roof at T-Mobile Park has been closed for comfort it's the opener of this three game series between the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and the Seattle Mariners it's going to be a premier pitching matchup. Two of the league's hardest throwers go head-to-head -head next. Anton Ramirez will be on the mound for the series opener. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, you can tell by this strikeout-to-walk ratio, 2-1, to one, that this guy is more a pitch-to-contact guy than a strikeout-walk guy. Five ball, three! Into the box now. Well, the Halos Solomon cash in in the top of the first, so Solomon comes on with nobody on, nobody out in the top of the second. To try to extend that lead. Let's go. Breaking ball that drops in for a strike. And fellas, you take generous zone on that 12 6 curveball, and that is strike one to the inside. Games, including a win last time out. Yeah, Matty B. We've got a team here that's been playing some pretty good baseball. Got a funny, funny wind up here. A little bit like uh, somebody like uh, Johnny Cueto, perhaps. Let's be honest. They've hit that weird body twist. They're capable of much better than this. Chopper infield, and that is playable by the second baseman for the first out of the inning. All right, guys. Here's Seattle's defensive alignment. I don't really care about Seattle's defensive alignment. Let's get back out here with Salamon. So Seattle or uh, Angels now down one to two in the top of the fourth. First offering on its way, and that's grounded through the gap on the right field side, and the left fielder has a little trouble with it. But that is going to be a base hit nonetheless, and Solomon puts himself on base along with his buddy with nobody out in the top of the fourth so Jeff Mc McNeil coming up to, uh, to bat it doesn't matter what it looks like a knocks a knock he stays alive still two and two Dickerson at second Barrio on at first with nobody out Pulled toward right center field. That's a fly Smith ball out to the gap in right. Making a little mistake here. Just about got down. caught by that, but Put that Malik Smith out there. Gosh, you know what would have helped if I'd have looked at Seattle's defensive alignment. Stepping in, David Fletcher. As oh, well. He's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. Now a ball grounded to short. This I should have stole on that. Might not have prevented the double play, but... Or, or rather, Solomon might still have got out on it, but... And one man left on. To the bottom of any number four we go. I don't know. It's the Mariners... Top six. Angels are hurting pretty bad. It's six to one. Seattle on top. Two out runner on first. Ready 
to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Fastball down and that away. Is that is ball this is one. Out to get right here. This is their best hitter. He's a great hitter, and he's a guy that kind of spark plug. There, huh? He gets this team going. So if I'm on the mound right now, you really want to try to get this guy out to hopefully change up well outside. That's now. ball two. Now the 2-0. -oh. Fouled off. Foul that ball off up, and that's a 2-1 count. Fastball away. Taken for strike two. And no errors to this point for the Angels. And, and slider down, down. Seventh of the ball game, and mistimed it, and that is so strikeout no for Solomon to no end the inning. One, one more chance for Solomon. It's top eight. Nobody on. Seven to two, Seattle on top. Pulled that one foul. Just as well, that one was kind of outside. More so than I felt comfortable with, let's say. And the pitch. Here's one that High fastball. One and one. 26,092 people here in T-Mobile Park to see the Seattle Mariners play. So Mariners, thank you for your support. Curveball. Very inside. And very low. Connected to that one, right center field, but playable just before the track for the second out of the game. And that is going to do it here. Solomon, unfortunately, fails out on his challenge, and the Angels fall well short of their competition here in Seattle, and they take the series opener. Took the lead in the second inning and rode that until the very end. Now from T-Mobile Park in Seattle, MLB The Show is on the air. Tonight, it's an in-division matchup from the AL West between the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and the Seattle Mariners. Mariners baseball comes your way next. Kendall Graveman, a right-hander from Alabama, gets the starting assignment. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Hey, this guy's done a real good job on the year keeping the opponent's batting average down. Both righties and lefties coming into this one, hitting under 250 against this guy. He's been good all season long. So bases are empty here. All right, so first time we see Solomon here, bottom first, two outs, and Meech Hanniger. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Dylan Bundy kicks and deals, and it's just a shallow fly ball. Actually, that one hung up there quite a while, and that is the third out of the inning. One, two, three, go the Mariners. They trail things here two to nothing. Okay, here comes Solomon once again. Up two to nothing here. Top two. Nobody on. Nobody out. Kendall Graveman. They want to keep the pressure on and try to build that lead as much as they can hmm. moving into the later innings. And fellas, you take a look at these Seattle Mariners at the start of play out here. In front of that sinker. Over their last six games, including a win last time out. Yeah, Maddie. The first game of any oh, series. Oh, no business swing at that one. And in fact, I've failed the challenge already. You take the first one. You put that other team. See how many challenges I can fail here. Well, that one's over to short second base. He fumbles it a little bit, but nonetheless, uh, still put out four to three from Corey Spangen Spangenberg. They got Ryan Healy, Corey, Corey Spangenberg, Tim Anderson, formerly of the White Sox, Brandon Drury, Crush Davis, Malik Smith, and Mitch Haniger, Willie Torres behind the dish and on the bump, Kendall Graveman. And that Tim Anderson is coming up to the plate here. Runner is first and second with one out. Swinging a 
Solomon going to have to rush this one. Coming in. He gets there and makes the play. Manages to get there on the sinking liner. Stepping in and ready for another shot. All right, top three. Runner first, two out. Yuck. Swing and a miss on the sinker, 0-1. I'm not sure what it is right now. My eye is not really working as it should. Off the plate and in. It's a ball and a strike. Well, that sinker is normally a really important pitch for him, but it really hasn't been effective so far. It just looks kind of flat. Connected on that one, but that's just a fly out to right field. And that'll end the inning. So once again, pretty good contact from Solomon, but just a shallow fly out to right field. Now top five, bases loaded, and if there was ever a chance to use Showtime, this would be it. Connected on that one, and there's no doubt about it. Adios, Pelota, Solomon Barrios, grand slam to right field. Number 15 on the year. Looks as pretty as that guy's haircut. 422 feet and 116 miles, or 112 miles an hour off the bat and gone. Big fly for Salomon Luis Aparicio Barrios Garcia. Oh, got the second out. I thought he might come out of this unscathed. But after that towering grand slam, he's about as scathed as you can get. Is that a word? Uh, who cares? It is now. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Chris well, Davis. A little bit of a shift here for Crush Davis. Down by a boatload as we enter the middle innings. It's about time they get something going. And the last thing you want to do is fall behind. And that is the first out of the inning. Easy put out for Solomon in right center field in the shift. Good time now to check out the Angels Road to the Show report. As you see a couple of guys in the upper levels of the minors that have been making waves of late. Ryan Healy coming out here back in our normal position now. Bottom six. Nobody on, one out. Good run, good swing on that one, and that puts it over Solomon's head into the stands. Home run for uh, Ryan Healy to put the Mariners on the board here in the bottom of the six, but they still got a mountain to climb. It's nine to one. On Angels now. on top. And they're now on the board, though still well behind. Yeah, they dug themselves quite a hole, but they say the first thing you need to do when that happens is to stop digging. Well, with that solo shot, they've stopped digging, but they've got a long way to go. Digging in. Okay, well, Solomon cashed in on that home run, but that doesn't mean we can't get another one here. I mean, if, if we're going to continue swinging like that, I guess it does mean we can't get another one right here, but we can endeavor to do a little bit better. And just like that, Solomon, two for four on the day. And two big smashes to right field. Adios, Pelota. Number 16 on the year for Solomon. 380 feet and 103 miles an hour off the bat and gone. Big fly for Solomon Luis Aparicio Barrios Garcia. Well, they were smart not to challenge him with a fastball, but it didn't matter. He's their big dog for a reason, so we waited, stayed back, and absolutely exploded through the zone on that one. Yeah, Solomon is not much of an oppo power hitter, but he has plenty of pop to the right field Brandon side. Drury Brandon Drury on now for these Mariners, two for two on the day. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long Another one back out to right field. Solomon's got it, and that's the first out of the inning. And it's just another Halos victory as Solomon comes out with two home runs in this one, making up for his bad performance the day before. And the Angels absolutely crush the Mariners here in this AL West matchup. See what happens for the rest of the series. Kendall 
Broadcasting from Seattle, Washington, where the roof has been shut at Top T-Mobile Park. Today, the finale of this three-game weekend series between the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and the Seattle Mariners. Two of the best bats in the business go at it next on the show. Ray McBride is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Mariners. What do we need to know here, Danny? One of the things that jumps out if you look at that stat sheet, a very high whip coming into this start. One of the things he's going to have to do a much better job, keep traffic off the bases, keep the walks down, try to limit the amount of hits. He's had a rough goal that's... So Solomon, three for eight on the series so far, which you wouldn't think is great, but he's got two home runs with five RBI on him. And uh, we definitely want to keep pounding these Mariners. Top of the second, one runner on second with one out. Fastball, Fastball taken, down in the zone, taken for strike, for strike one. Fellas, the Mariners entering play here this afternoon. They enter this one off a loss after winning five of seven prior to that. Yeah, Maddie, dropping their last game. Now they find themselves at 500 again. They got to find a way to get on a hot streak. You cannot continue to go peaks and valleys throughout the course of this season and ride that 500. Connected on that one, here. but it's and just a fly out to right field. Seven out of ten, eight out of ten to get this going in the right direction. And that'll bring up Malik Smith, Smith here, still scoreless going into the bottom of the third with one out. Shohei Otani comes set. The one and two pitch. Right that one is going to be tough, but Solomon does get to it before it bounces out of the way. I'm not sure where the center fielder was on that one, but it's going to lead to three runs for the Mariners by the time Solomon comes up to bat next. Fastball down and in, taken, ball one. According to the career numbers on the back of his baseball card, Barrios is a 300 hitter on the day. Can't complain about that. Maddie, this is one of the best offensive forces in the sport. Not only an amazing batting average, but does it in a variety of different ways with damage. Fastball on the black this time. Felt obliged to swing on it, and that's strike two now. Change up inside, evens the count. We got nobody. Another one down and in. The zone. It's gone full That's down ball three. If you're ever going to see a position player go to the mound, it's going to be in a situation like this. Get him to relax a little bit, focus on his mechanics, and get that fastball back in the zone. And a changeup. It was a close one. Could have gone either way. But Ump calls ball four, and Solomon takes a walk to first base. Bringing up Jeff McNeil. Throw over from the pitcher. Just manages to get his hand in. Hey, get a good one. Here now the 2-2 is looked at and the count moves full. Got to believe that runner from first is going to be in motion, especially in this situation, as an offensive player just hit something hard because those defenders are going to be moving. Nobody out here. Nobody. Run, run, set. Here's the three and two. Count still full. Three and two. Barrios on at first. Nobody out. I feel like I've had a bad stretch here with base running. You strike him out, but the throw is both low and off target, so Solomon gets in no problem. They ran the risk of a strike them out, throw them out play there, but that was a good job of getting in there successfully. On three and two, there's kind of a, a bad jump too, to so unfortunate place. on so that. It be a good time to be aggressive, just like that. Corey Dickerson coming to the plate now, 0 for one on the day. Corey Dickerson lifted down the line and left. Sprays that one off into shallow left. And he's got that one, no problem. Kind of an awkward throw again. Having some fumble fingers out here on the plate. Might be due to the rattled perk that Solomon has where fielding and throwing errors are much more common than normal. 
Good opposite field power here. Taking high. Cranks that one right field, and, and that one's out of here. No chance to make a play on that one. So Xander Bogarts cashes in with Solomon on second with a 373-foot home run to right field. And that's a big fly for Xander Bogarts, putting the Angels back within one here, top of the fifth. Solomon coming back out here. It's still two to three here, top seven with one out and nobody on. Ray McBride, the pitcher for these Mariners, is still out here. Curveball below the zone for ball one. Line drive to center field. Drives that one to center field, but that is just going to be right at the center fielder, unfortunately, for the second out. And that is going to be another Mariners victory here. So I believe they have taken the series now at this point. So we could head back to the clubhouse and see what else we can do. Well, if the worst thing you can say about Solomon's performance this series is that he went three for ten with two home runs and five RBI, yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a pretty good series by anybody's standards, I think. Only the one strikeout too, which I feel is is uh, quite gratifying, and most of the outs that he got on balls in play were line outs, not. Uh, just flyouts or groundouts. So he actually did fairly well, I feel, with the stick this time around. Got a clubhouse day to make friends with Silvino Bracho, I guess. Or we could start poking fun at our uh, our colleagues down in Houston. Um, yeah, you know, let's do that. Let's go ahead and poke some fun at our friends down in Houston. He sends some bants ahead of the game. I don't know. I haven't thought about you at all. So that boosts the rivalry up a little bit. How does that do for our lightning rod perk? Puts us up at the top. Awesome. So let's quickly... Talking with the agent, too. Let's not forget. We want to go back. What's the outlook on a trade to get me in the role I want? Not content with they got you locked up you. for a uh, while yet, Solomon, so we're not great on ground to be granted a trade. I can float the idea periodically, but we can't expect a lot. I want to be a shortstop for somebody. So let's do that. Trouble in paradise. So, but before anything comes of that, let's take advantage of our brand new perk here. We got either when it rains, improved hitting ability when your team is in the lead, or lightning in a bottle. Showtime is available when stealing in two out situations. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and use that because stealing is something that Solomon kind of does. And that should put us out here against the Houston Astros in Minute Maid Park. And Clayton Kershaw on the mound for the Stars. Let's get out here and get it. We are under the bright lights tonight as MLB Network welcomes you to this presentation of Major League Baseball. A Memorial Day get-together for you here at the ballpark between the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and the Houston Astros. Looking forward to this matchup and it's next on MLB Network. Clayton Kershaw, a Texas-born left-hander, gets the starting nod. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, man, we're getting a look at a guy that's really been struggling lately. In his last three starts, he has a whip of over 1.50. Lots of base runners, lots of hits, and lots of walks. And that doesn't add up to very good performances. So he's going to look to turn things. Oh, dear. Leading off with a boss challenge, and they come few, fewer come bigger than Clayton Kershaw on the mound. So Solomon going to have to bring it. Bring the big stick to the plate here today. 
And if you're going to challenge us, you might as well hit a home run. Runner on first with one out here in the top of the second. Angels down one nothing. He's set. Here it comes. Fastball down the way. And fellows, these Astros entering play here tonight. They come off another loss last time out, and in fact, they've dropped three of their last four. Yeah, Matty V, we've got a team here that's been playing some pretty good baseball. They're we not they're quite enough. in first place yet, D Row, but they're playing good, and they'd like to stay competitive through the month of May. Yeah, they've played okay. Let's yeah, be honest. No they've hit okay. Go. They've pitched okay. They're capable of high fastball. This, but it's early. We find ourselves took just that in the for early strike one. Ride it out and find a way to get hot. So let's take a peek at the umpiring crew in this one. Hey, behind the plate is Ricky Holiday. Hey, D Row, you better be up there ready to swing with Ricky Holiday behind the plate. Ah, inside fastball. Yeah, Couldn't I'm, hold I'm back on like it, that. and that was yeah, strike that's two. Player. That's the one pitch that you almost can't get to with a power guy on the mound. I'm okay with you giving a little bit on the corners. If you start giving north, it makes it super tough on the hitters. Fouled off that slider coming in. Drive it. Let's go, kid. Hey, you got it. No one better. Let's go. Up to two Ooh. balls and two strikes now. Well, one thing about him. Not sure what the ump was seeing there, but I sure, sure didn't see that one coming in, and he did me a favor. Got a second life out of that one. Here's the two two. Grounded down the right side or the left side of the field. Past the third baseman's glove. It's not a home run, but Solomon is on base here. Runners first and second now with one away. So Angel's got a chance to cash in now. Looks like we got Jeff McNeil on the plate. First and second looks like a big inning could be brewing. Uh, ball and two strikes now. Hey, Shaw over at second. Man. Barrios at first, one gone. Got one down now. One down. And Kershaw oh, kicks no. and deals. All right, you're here, you're and here. that one and skitters away. So Solomon and Travis Shaw so are going to move right on up to uh, second and third. So. Really good opportunity here for these angels to score. They just have to not hit into some kind of silly double play situation. That's a grounder. Well, that's a sacrifice. Call it a sacrifice hit if you like, but a RBI ground out here for Jeff McNeil. Travis Shaw cashing in on that ground out to shortstop, and that is going to put Solomon on third base. And despite the opportunity to use lightning in a bottle here, this is really not the time to use it because, well, stealing home is always a fraught endeavor to say the least. Thirty-two pitches for Kershaw through the first two innings, and he's not done yet. So he's struggling a little bit to put guys away here in the top of the second. Two and two. Here it is. Fouls that one off. Stays alive. Two two. Pops it up on the infield. It's not going to do much for us. Solomon gets over to third, but cannot score. Angels do tie it up. One to one here going into the bottom of the second. So bring up Tony Kemp for these Astros. Bottom three. Nobody on. Nobody out. Fly ball out to right field. Solomon. Miss it a little bit, but drifts over and makes the catch, and that's the first out of the inning. I'm not sure what that was supposed to be, but I'm not too interested in it. Runner on first with two outs here, top of the fourth. 
is still the only hit in this game so far. They've been pretty well shut down. Guys on the mound have really much controlled the whole outcome. Fastball down and in. Strike one to start the at bat. Had my eye on the slider, I think, but. Oh, high fastball now. No, no chill this time around from Kershaw. He's coming after guys. early in the count. I was about to wait you out, but now game on. High fastball again, way above the zone, and that's ball one. I have no issue wasting a pitch on 0 2 to try to get a guy to go fishing, but it has to be some. 59 pitches now through four, and if Solomon strikes out on the next one, it'll be 60. I mean, even if he doesn't strike out on it, it'll be 60 pitches, but again, Kershaw is not going to go the distance in this one, I don't think, not with 60 pitches through three and two-thirds minimum. Here now the 2-2. Ah. Couldn't swing the bat on that one, or I guess I could have, but my eyes weren't going to let me. But Kershaw turning it around a little bit, still out here. Top seven with nobody out with 88 pitches. Oof, that's a nice slider. Clayton Kershaw is a scary dude, man, when it comes to pitching. One and no pitch on the way. He pulls this one pulls it into, into the right. corner, that and that is going to get down out there. So Solomon manages to make a base hit to get himself on base here. Runners first and second again with nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Dead red piece of cheese, middle of the plate, and he didn't miss it. Bringing up Jeff McNeil once again. He's got a walk on the day. Managed to score somebody in on that uh, RBI earlier. Two balls and a strike to the Angels' first baseman. Well, I know the last thing he wants to do is load the bases right here. So the pressure is on right now to get back in the strike zone. Hey, see it. High fastball puts him at 3-1. Not an ideal count here for Kershaw, anyway. I'm finding it hard to dis dissociate myself as the pitching guy from the Jason series from the hitting guy on the Solomon series. I mean, he's carving these guys up with all of his pitches. Hit pretty well out toward right center field. Get out there to right. And, and that one's out of here. Lead. Adios, Pelota. Jeff McNeil cashes in in the top of the seventh with nobody out and two runners on. And that puts the Halos up four to one here with, you know, two, two three innings to go still. Still no outs here, top seven. Big fly for Jeff McNeil. And that is a big, big clutch home run. Boy, talk about how an inning can get away from you, right? Three-run homer already in this inning. They've yet to give up an out, and this could turn out to be one of those really ugly innings. Solomon coming back out here. And they're just going to give him the four ball, the intentional walk. Uh, not even risk giving him the chance of hitting a big hit here. So that'll load the bases with one away here. 19,022 people in the stands at Minimaid Park. The Astros, thank you for your support. And that'll bring up Jeff McNeil. Hit a big one earlier. So now the Astros have to pitch carefully if they want to get out of this one. Or, you know, they can pitch poorly and give up another big hit for anyone to hit better in this spot than this guy right here. He looks dialed in at the I know which right one now. I'd rather have. We all know he's a really good hitter, and this is probably yeah, a right good here. example go, why. Go. He fell behind 0-2, but knowing they're probably going to try to get Curve him ball. the pitcher's pitch, he got really patient. Fills the count here for uh, Jeff McNeil. He's in a much better position now on a 2-2 count. 
Payoff pitch on its way. And this is swung on and blew it right past in the there. fastball. The bases will stay loaded with two away now. I really like that he gave up nibbling out of the zone trying to get him to chase. That wasn't working, so he just reached back and fired a good All right. Base is still loaded, 1-1 one, one count. No better feeling in the world when you're a pitcher than throwing a fastball right by a guy. Two balls and a strike to count. Well, when the pressure starts to intensify, Anthony, I think this is Anthony Bourbon. Harder and harder to hit. I don't remember. Once you get into the uh, regens, it's tough to keep track of player names. Here's the two and two. Grounded up the first. Grounded, but foul along the, along the first baseline. The 2-2 two -two pitch, high and deep down the left Pulls field it foul into the left field and stands. Staying alive, 2-2. Two -two. The 2-2. Two -two. And foul tipped it into the catcher's glove. That's unfortunate. Base is stranded, loaded. Back-to-back strikeouts keep him out of danger. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. And that is going to be Angel still up 4-1 to one going into the bottom of the eighth. And just another Halos victory. That's enough for it to stand up. The Jeff McNeil home run to pull us ahead here. And I think this was the series opener. Finish in this evening's game, the Los Angeles Angels used a three-run seven. Yeah, so good opening to the series. Win number four on the field. Tuesday night baseball now from the home of the Astros, Minute Maid Park in Houston. Tonight, the second of three to start the week between the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and the Houston Astros. It's Astros baseball on the show. Next. Ronaldo Lopez is on the mound for Houston in this one. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, this guy comes into this start, Matt, having lost two of his last three starts, so you know he wants to get off on the right foot in this one. One of the keys, getting outs early and establishing his off-speed pitch repertoire early on in this one. We'll see if he can do that. In so Solomon actually leading the Angels with 16 home runs. I'm not sure if that's a flat-footed tie or if he's actually leading outright, but still, early in the season with 16 home runs, that's a great number to have. And it's mm. fouled away. And fellows, these Astros entering play right. here tonight. They have my eye off that uh, slider a little bit. Four of their last five. Yeah, Matty B, we've got a team here. But they're playing good and they'd like to stay. Ah, pop that one yeah, up. That's okay. unfortunate. Let's be honest. They've hit okay. And we'll right over the catcher's there. head. The play is made here to end the inning. Well, I'll bring up Luke Voigt here, bottom two, with nobody on and nobody out. The first baseman, Luke Voigt. Hit the other way out toward right field. Slugged out to the kingdom of Solomon, but he's under it to get it, and that's the first out. Time for a look at the Angels on defense. And let's focus our attention on Xander Bogart, shortstop up the shoot. Well, we got Jeff McNeil, Daniel Robertson, Xander Bogarts, and Travis Shaw infield. Trey Mancini, Mike Trout, and Solomon Barrios outfield. Luis Moreno putting down signs, and on the bump today, Jaime Berea. Brings up Wilson Ramos here. A couple outs later, runner on first with two outs. Berea kicks and deals. Fly to right field, and that one is over his head. Not a chance. That one is a big home run for Wilson Ramos to put the Astros on top. A two-run blast to straightaway right field. Seven home runs for him on the year now, and the Astros have taken a two-to-nothing lead. That one definitely seems worth taking a look at with show track. It wasn't a particularly deep home run, but as you can see, he connected pretty well. 110 miles an hour off the bat, and it got out of here in a hurry.
Now to bring up Jackie Bradley Jr. Next batter up. Also coming out Solomon's way. That one seems like it's shallow enough for Solomon to get to, and that'll be the third out of the inning. So Jaime gets smacked. Couple runs across here for the Astros in the bottom of the second. We'll see if we can recover in the coming innings. Well, we do, in fact, recover in the top of the third, and Solomon is already back up to bat. High fastball taken for ball one. Now, I'm sure these infielders know it, but this hitter can burn down the baseline. So if he puts a ground ball in play, the defense is going to have to make a perfect turn to turn two. And oh, look like fastball below the zone taken for ball one. That evens the counted one and one. Hey, let's go right here. Hey, you got it. No one better. Let's go. Looking to drop one down, but he can't make contact hmm. one and two. Thought I'd try to be cheeky there, but it didn't really work. Inside slider just about gets Solomon, and that is a 2-2 count. A lot of times you see guys in the middle of the order get worked away, but not right here. They're keeping it inside on him. Is that an effort to keep it? Ah, low fastball. I'm not even sure if that was a fastball, but nonetheless, bad swing on a pitch I shouldn't have, and that is a wild pitch that allows the runners to at least move up. So productive in a way. But Astros strike back by the bottom of the fourth. Four to two here, runner on first with one out. Another fly ball out to Solomon. He's got it. And forces the runner back to first for the second out. Standing in, Solomon Barrio. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Yeah, but it was a good chance. Fastball inside. Ball one. for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. Change up outside. Ball two. Having trouble with the zone, looks like. Outside. Fastball again outside the zone. I'd be shocked if this wasn't a four-pitch walk right here. He doesn't want to mess around and leave something over the heart of the plate and get beat in this situation. Ah, that was the one to take, but change-ups as, as ever are my kryptonite. Fell that one off. A little bit jumpy here. That was the one to take, too. That one was clearly drifting away. Come on, let it fly right here. Let it fly. Get up. Again, another foul ball. Foul that one off. Payoff pitch one more time. Now he goes the other way. Connected on that one. It's going out to left center field. They're going to have to play it off the Karam, and it looks like they had a little bit of an awkward play on it. And Solomon is in the third with a triple. All right, let's go, Venga. Yeah, and he's the type of player that's thinking triple as soon as he hit it to the goes three zero to three two, and then hits a triple off of the the uh, wall out there in left field, just barely misses a home run. And that is Solomon on third with one away. Ground out, fly out, anything would be helpful. Get the bullpen arms up. warming up with 86 pitches through four and a third. I don't blame them. Ready on one and two. Outside and low that time. Now it's Lopez has to pitch another two thirds of the inning. He has to finish out the inning in order to qualify for the pitcher win. Three and but they're working him awful hard today. And that's lined 
down the uh, gap in left field in the left side of the infield, and that is going to be a base hit to put the Angels back within one. Solomon cashes in on Otani Sons. Liner to left field. All the variables into consideration. You're not trying to do too much. Anything. And it's tied back up, top six, by the time Solomon comes back up to bat. Runner on first with two outs. Here comes the first pitch. Fastball outside. Well, that was a big two out single. We this is Darren Castillo. The inning went from totally under control to now. At this point, I'm probably going to be late uploading the episode. I don't much care. This is how two out rallies start. Oof. My fastball just above the zone. But he comes up empty. You know, that can really be an effective pitch for a guy that has a lot of power. They're up there looking for a fastball up in the zone, so if you can place it a little above it, they have a hard time getting the barrel up there. Hey, one pitch right here. Come on now. He's going. Now the one and one pitch. Taken, and that one is down, and a little trouble with that one. That's a stolen base there for Mikey Trout, second on the year for him. A lot of pitches don't throw over twice in a row, so I think he was going on first movement. And, and now that they've nice. opened the base, they're just going to four ball him. Solomon over to and fourth. The fourth or, <laughs> on the goodness gracious. Solomon over to well, first with the intentional pass. The hands of a guy like that. He's just too dangerous, and they decided they'll take their chances with the next guy in the lineup. And that'll bring up Shohei Otani, who's already cashed one in today, one for two. Seven home runs on the year so far. Right here, that third base coach is dying to wave his arms. I wouldn't be surprised if anything hit hard through the infield. He's going to wave them. And here's a fastball, not close, as he runs it to two and one now. Boy, he better get it back together here quick because he's got two guys on already. He's starting to lose location of that. Two one count here to Otani Song. Right here. Two and two. Ta uh, taken. Better that he let that pitch go like a changeup, perhaps. A taken strike two. It's pretty hard to sit back enough on a well thrown changeup. The set and the two two. And he's out in front of that one. Breaking ball below the zone, and he swings through it to end the inning. So Angels are up. Five to four in the top of the ninth. Low fastball taken. Ball one. As we near the end of this one, it's clear the long ball has played a big role in today's outcome. Dan Dero, what are your final thoughts on what we have Another one down. Yeah, just non competitive. Took it for strike one. Dan, and the offense Andres Bourbon on the mound. I knew it was his name was something like that. You want to have location, and it was obvious in this one today that the pitchers weren't on point, and what happens when that happens? Hmm. Hitters make you pay, and the long ball was a big part of this one here. If I'm the guy in the batter's box right here, I have to take a step out. High fastball taken to even the count. Out of it. Throwing 94, 96 miles an hour. Hey, have a rip. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Curveball away goes. to fill the count. Time to focus here. This game is way too close to be walking, guys. So we'll Straw see if walk. they can make him swing the bat on Let's this not get too game. greedy here. Count is full. Here's the pitch. And, and got greedy. Inside fastball, and I could not stop myself. But it's just another Halos victory all the same. Bounce back in the late innings, going up 5-4. to four, And I think we've won this series. Yes, indeed. They sat Solomon for the third game of the series, and we win big 13-2. So we swept the Astros at home, and I think that'll put us in pretty good position here. We're two and a half games back of the Athletics in the division, but that's partly because we haven't played as many games as they have. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when we make up some of those games later on in the season. So that's going to do it for me. Until next time, I'm Tyrant Saber, and I will see you the ballpark.